Okay. We are going to do some lollipop chicken, which is just fancy drumsticks. Uh, we're gonna do it two ways. Um, so I saw this at the store. It's uh, essentially a rack to hang your drumsticks on um, instead of lying them directly on the grates in the grill. So we're gonna do, we're gonna fill this up. It holds 12. So I'll do 12 on there and then we'll do, um, I think I have 20 pieces here. So then we'll do eight directly on the grill and we'll see if it makes any difference whatsoever. So what we need to do here is clean these up. Let's get set up. We need to clean these up. So I'm gonna cut all around here and then pull off all that extra skin and, and all the garbage there. So let's cut this. You do need a sharp knife, which I historically don't have, but we just got a new set, which is very sharp. Put everything here. We're just gonna use a paper towel for the grip. So I'm trying to lollipop these. Theoretically, it should be easy, right? Theoretically, we should just come down a little bit and I should be able to cut through. I'm pushing pretty hard here. All the crap, skin, some of the tendons up here. Cut through all of this. Just sharpen this nice you knife. You notice I switch knives. Because I've been struggling and if this doesn't come off easily, then forget it. We're just gonna cook drumsticks like a regular person and not try to make this so fancy and trendy for no reason. So I'm really cutting in here pretty deep, pretty hard. It's a pressure, it's a sharp knife. It's going all the way around. And now this is when I should be able to use a paper towel to grip it and rip it off. And that's just not happening. Okay, you know what? After this one, I am not gonna waste my time trying to be fancy. We are just going to cook these like regular drumsticks. Um, the whole lollipop thing doesn't make it taste any better. This is, this is a pain in the ass, honestly. This is not worth it. Um, the whole lollipop thing doesn't make it taste any better. It just makes them look nicer, and frankly, if it was easy, I'd do it. It's not easy, and it's not worth it. So we are just going to season these up. Uh, we're still gonna do what I said before, which is uh, we're gonna put 12 on the rack and the rest on the grate. And we're gonna see if this rack has any sort of meaningful uh, you know, impact on the taste or the flavor or ease of cooking. Um, these are not gonna stand up on their own. So putting the other ones on the grate, they'll have to rest sideways. So we'll see what happens. But um, we're gonna have four lollipop, then the rest are just gonna be normal chicken wings because we're normal people and I'm not gonna spend an hour trying to make this look pretty. So um, we'll come back in a minute, I'll get this all seasoned up, we'll let it sit, and then we'll get our grill up to temperature. So the grill is going to be 350 for about an hour. That's a very common theme here. Uh, we did that with the queso, we did that with the spatchcock chicken. This is about the same. We will check the temperature. We'll look for internal temperatures on these because it's chicken and if you undercook it, you have a problem. So um, we'll come back, we'll season this up, we'll get the grill lit, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get everything on and we'll see if the, um, if the drumstick rack is actually worth the money. All right, we're starting our fire here. Uh, we're looking for 350 for about an hour. Um, so we've done this a million times. It's about two and a half fingers on bottom and you know, a notch and a half, two notches on top. I have three big chunks here of apple. It's definitely more than I need, but um, you know, I had them, so I threw them in here. Uh, and I like apple with chicken. It's not too strong. Um, it's nice and sweet. And even though we're, we'll be doing some buffalo uh, with these drumsticks, I still, you know, I, I don't want the chicken itself to taste like smoke, right? It's not a brisket. But uh, we'll let this go. Me, personally, it takes about a half an hour for that white new smoke to clear to get to the good smoke that you actually want in your wood. If you start cooking before that white smoke clears, you're only going to taste charcoal. It's going to be gross. So you got to let that clear. It's about a half an hour. But uh, we'll check on uh, we'll check on this in 20 minutes or so. Uh, and if we're at temperature, we'll go ahead and uh, get our chicken moving.
Okay, so we abandoned the whole fancy chicken lollipop thing because that was a nightmare. Uh, now we just have to season them. So I'm gonna go ahead, put a binder on these, uh, and then we're gonna season them with um, my favorite seasoning, Meat Church uh, Gospel Barbecue. Um, so let's go ahead and get some duck fat spray on here. Uh, you can use olive oil, um, but I'm gonna use duck fat spray. We're just gonna spray it on here, make sure the seasoning sticks. Get some on here. Love them nice. Okay. Okay. And now we're gonna season them. We are gonna season them pretty heavy. So don't be shy. We'll make sure we'll get all sides. You can mess with the skin, right? Try to get it under the skin, then pull the skin back over. That's a lot of work. So we're gonna end up saucing a lot of these anyway, so I'm not gonna spend too much time messing with the skin and doing all that. So let's just go ahead, make sure we get all sides seasoned, and then we will let this sit out while we start our fire, which honestly will probably be a half an hour. But all that's gonna do is give it more time for the seasoning to stick, um, and so we don't lose all of it when we throw it on. white, thick. This is not good smoke. Uh, if I put it on now, my chicken would taste like charcoal. Um, so we're almost at temperature here. Um, this is what my vents look like in the bottom. It's about two and a half fingers. I don't touch that. Uh, this one I did close up a little bit, so we're at one notch. I might close it a little more. Uh, it's actually been like 35 minutes or so, um, but I'm still gonna wait for this, um, this smoke to, to be gone. So I get the, the better, they say blue, right? But it's, you know, it's smoke that it's just not so obvious, essential, essentially. So um, we'll keep an eye on it. Probably a couple more minutes of this. This happens when it's burning new, fresh charcoal. So it really just has to burn the charcoal for a few minutes, get through that outer coat. Uh, and then, then the charcoal just burns hot and then the rest of the smoke comes from the wood. All right, the smoke is uh, pretty much where I want it. It's still not perfect, but Let's go ahead and get these loaded on here. So again, we're gonna put a bunch of these directly on the rack, um, on the grill rack, and we're gonna put others in here. And we're gonna see if this thing is actually worth it and makes a difference. Let's load it up. the other ones directly on the grill in the front. So we're gonna do 350 for an hour. I'll come check on it. We are gonna have to probe these. So when they get to 160, I'm going to uh, dunk some of them in uh, buffalo sauce and uh, put them back on so that sauce gets uh, nice and sticky. So I'm gonna close this lid and let this go for probably an hour, but we'll check on it in 40 minutes just to be sure. This is the smoke we're looking for. So I have no idea if the camera's picking up on it, but. It's not nearly as thick, and it does have a bluish tint to it. So that white smoke was thick, and it smelled like smoke. This is blue, and it smells like cooking, honestly. It smells like, you know, it's a little sweeter. It, does, it doesn't smell like a campfire. The white stuff does. So this is what we're looking for. If you put your food on when you have that thick white smoke, your food is going to taste like smoke and charcoal, and it's gonna be a waste. All right, it's been a half an hour what I assume is the halfway point. We're exactly at 350. We've got the good smoke going. Let's see what these look like. All right, some skin pulled back over here, but I'm just gonna rotate these. Probably don't need to, but I'm going to anyway. Just to make sure. We're gonna dunk these anyway, so it's not a big deal. But the skin's pulling back. I mean, these look good, so we'll keep on eye on them another half an hour. I'll check the temp in a little bit, and then uh, we'll sauce them. All right, let's check uh, where we are. I'm going to probe them. 
So I've got a, a nice instant read thermometer. Okay. Let's see where we are. We'll check the thickest ones. All right, so we're definitely good for temperature. All right, we're reading. Oh, see all those juices flew out. That's why I hate temp testing so many. Um, so we're definitely good for temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run inside. I'm going to fill up a cup full of buffalo sauce, and we're going to dunk a bunch of these in buffalo sauce and put them right back on. So I'm gonna, all right, so I have just filled a clear solo cup full of buffalo sauce, and I'm literally just going to dunk these to coat them. And we're going to put them right back on. They are hot as hell. Oh shit. Alright, we got a glove. This actually came free, these gloves came free with the Kick Ash basket. Um, the basket divider that I just bought. So I use that basket quite a bit. I haven't used the divider yet, but I will. With the rotisserie, but it's definitely helpful for times like this. So we're just soaking them in buffalo sauce basically. sit for another 10 minutes or so just let that sauce really stick and render and then uh, we'll come back and take them off all right let's go ahead and get these off uh, you're not going to see this whole process but I have two different trays and I have them divided in half so we're gonna put these in one tray these in another tray and we'll we'll uh, we'll go ahead and see if this is worth it I mean at the end of the day that was only eight dollars and even if the taste is exactly the same which I expect. Um, honestly, the convenience of potentially not opening this to rotate the other ones uh, is worth it. So we'll see. Uh, as long as it doesn't have a negative taste, we're good. So these ones that were sauced, we're just gonna leave them as is. They were already sauced. Uh, the ones that were not sauced, I actually plan on throwing some more seasoning on them very quickly. So they still have some moisture on the outside. We'll throw some seasoning on them while they're a little a little wet, um, so that can stick on. Not a ton, not like we did the first time, but just a little bit to take care of anything that fell off. Now, I'm not gonna eat these on camera because that's disgusting. But, uh, you know, I'll have a few bites and come back and let you know. This one's stuck. And let you know um, if I can taste the difference. Okay, so I just had a couple, and we did a taste test with the family. The ones that were hanging down were definitely um, more evenly cooked, if you will. Um, but at the end of the day, the flavor was pretty much exactly the same. And, uh, you know, um, overall, it got us to the same point. I, I would say for $7, um, it's probably worth it, because it kept it organized, and I didn't have, don't have to come back halfway through and flip them. If you look at the grill, you know, look how dirty and how much you know skin and seasoning stuck to the grate for the ones that we didn't use the rack for. Um, so for seven dollars, the whole twelve pieces. Uh, I'll, I'll probably go back to the store and get another one. Um, so we do twenty-four. But overall, I think it was you know worth the seven bucks for sure. I'll link down below if I can find it on Amazon. But um, you know these came out great. Feel free to make any changes when you do it. But uh, you know, like, subscribe. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see or if you have any questions.